the Justice Department is suing Georgia over its controversial election laws. Is this about ensuring equality, or is this a power grab? Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. There are a lot of things we just can't seem to stop talking about in America, like racism. Everything is racist now, including Georgia's new voter law, also known as SB202. It was passed back in March by Republicans who said they wanted to ensure voter integrity. Many Democrats are outraged with this law's revisions to absentee voting, early voting, and voter ID requirements. So for more details on what the law actually changed and how it's not quite what you might think, check out the episode we did back in April. President Biden has called Georgia's voting law a blatant attack on the Constitution and good conscience. Several civil rights groups have sued Georgia for violating the Voting Rights Act of 1965, along with the First and Fourteenth Amendments. And now, the U.S. Department of Justice has also filed a lawsuit against Georgia. It was announced by Attorney General Merrick Garland and the head of the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division, Kristen Clark. Today, the Department of Justice is suing the state of Georgia. Our complaint alleges that recent changes to Georgia's election laws were enacted with the purpose of denying or abridging the right of black Georgians to vote on account of their race or color in violation of Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. The Justice Department's suit takes particular aim at the law's provisions for absentee voting, including those that prohibit election officials from distributing unsolicited absentee ballots and those that limit the number of drop boxes for those ballots. According to Kristen Clark, Georgia's law has new and unnecessarily stringent identification requirements to obtain an absentee ballot. Opponents of the law say it's designed specifically to stop black voters. Supporters of the law say the rules are specifically designed to prevent voter fraud. In fact, the law uses the same language on voter IDs for absentee ballots as current federal law, a law that was passed in the Help America Vote Act of 2002, which Senator Joe Biden voted for. So is Biden as racist as the Georgia voting law, or is neither of them racist? I don't have a good answer to that. Meanwhile, the Department of Justice is being led by Merrick Garland. He's a liberal who was nominated to the Supreme Court by President Obama in 2016, but denied confirmation by the Republican-led Senate. But then in 2021, President Biden nominated him as Attorney General, and the Senate, which is now led by Democrats, confirmed him easily. Now, I'm not saying Merrick Garland has a grudge against Republicans because the Justice Department's attack on the Georgia voting law may be bigger than that. It could be an attempt to give the federal government permanent power over states. I'll explain after the break. Welcome back. During Merrick Garland's announcements the Justice Department was suing Georgia, he took aim at a 2013 Supreme Court decision that took away the federal government's power to veto changes in state voting policies. Eight years ago today, the Supreme Court issued the decision in Shelby County v. Holder. Prior to that decision, the Justice Department had an invaluable tool it could use to protect voters from discrimination, Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act. Under that section, any change with respect to voting in a covered jurisdiction could not be enforced unless the jurisdiction first proved to the Justice Department or to the United States District Court for the District of Columbia that the proposed change did not deny or abridge the right to vote on account of race, color, or membership in a language minority group. The Voting Rights Act was made in 1965 in response to a long history of racist voting discrimination. Section 5 was meant to enforce the 15th Amendment, which outlaws voter discrimination. However, it was meant to be temporary. It was renewed four times. The last time was in 2006. And then in 2013, the Supreme Court decision in Shelby County v. Holder 
made a final decision to get rid of Section 5. The court ruled states with a history of voting discrimination no longer needed to get federal approval for changes to their election procedures. The court stated that Section 5 is based on outdated statistics and discriminatory practices that have already been eradicated, and that the U.S. no longer has the pervasive, flagrant, widespread, and rampant discrimination that was common in the South 50-plus years ago. For example, today there are no poll taxes, no literacy tests, no groups of white men standing menacingly outside polling stations on election day telling black people to just go home. Many on the left, however, disagree. They still see racism everywhere, and say the Supreme Court decision eight years ago greenlit voter suppression laws, laws that made it harder for minorities to vote. Some people say the Justice Department needs to keep enforcing policies that ensure voting rights for minorities. To them, the 2020 election and the wave of Republican-led voting laws are proof that voter suppression is still live and real. If Georgia had still been covered by Section 5, it is likely that SB 202 would never have taken effect. We urge Congress to restore this invaluable tool. Georgia's Republican governor, Brian Kemp, didn't like that. He responded by saying the Justice Department's lawsuit was born out of lies and misinformation. He also argues the Biden administration is weaponizing the Justice Department to carry out their far-left agenda. Is this a move to advance a far-left agenda? Is it a move to give the federal government more power over states? I'll explain more after the break. Welcome back. So many on the right criticize the Justice Department for pushing a far-left agenda with their lawsuit against Georgia. Separate from the lawsuit but related is a bill in Congress called the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. It aims to overturn Shelby County v. Holder by listing new criteria that would require states to get approval from the federal government for changes to their voting laws or electoral districts. For example, states would have to get approval from the federal government if they've had 15 or more voting rights violations in the past 25 years. The bill also requires states to get approval from the federal government if they have voting districts with racial or language minority groups that make up at least 20% of voters. This would give the Justice Department the power to veto changes of polling place locations, voter ID and registration requirements, and the electoral district boundary lines in many states. Conservatives fear this bill would force racial gerrymandering, make race the predominant factor in the election process, advance the partisan interests of one political party, and prevent common sense election reforms like voter ID. They say activists in the Justice Department will advance far-left agendas using the race card since it would be up to states to prove that they aren't racist. But would the Justice Department do that? A 2013 report from the Justice Department Inspector General found the voting section of the Civil Rights Division hires a majority of its lawyers from five left-leaning organizations. And some have accused Kristen Clark, the current head of the Civil Rights Division, of having said hateful things in the past. While she was a student at Harvard University, Clark wrote a controversial article arguing that extra melanin gives black people greater mental, physical, and spiritual abilities than white people. Later, Clark explained it was meant to show how absurd racist theories from white people sound. Though, she didn't make that clear when she wrote it. Many Jewish organizations aren't a fan of Clark either. While at Harvard, she invited anti-Semitic academic Tony Martin to speak. Martin alleged the existence of a Jewish conspiracy that seeks to thwart black progress. This forced the Harvard student newspaper to condemn Clark. But that was back in the 90s. It was a different time. In the 90s, Star Wars could have a miserly Jewish slave owner and a Jamaican who ruined democracy. And everyone seemed okay with that, somehow. But even if we dismiss Kristen Clark's problematic stuff back in college, many on the right are alarmed by her racial activism since then. According to a Justice Department official, while she was the head of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, Clark demanded the Justice Department 
drop a case against a black political official for violating the Voting Rights Act even though he was engaging in racial discrimination against white voters in Mississippi. She also pressured the Justice Department to drop a case against two members of the new Black Panther Party, who intimidated Philadelphia voters. Having her in charge is definitely making some people think the Justice Department will cater to leftist agendas. But as I said, the bigger issue may be the Justice Department wants power over state voting laws. If this bill passes, it will give the federal government a lot more power. And people on the left should be concerned about this too. Next time there's someone like Donald Trump in power, whoever he picks for the Justice Department will be able to stop states from changing their laws too. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewer contributions. Please support us with a dollar or more per episode by visiting patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.